Welcome to the Court of Public Opinion. You be the judge. We're going to continue with a summary of some of the information that we've been delving into. You know, at first I thought I was going to get into a lot of the other topics, but we're going to continue and we're going to summarize some of the things that we've already come to at least some conclusion, uh, at least for, for the time being, so that we can go into recess. Um, so you want to stay tuned for that here in the summary. Regarding the matter of the images that have been found on Instagram and the ongoing continued discussion regarding Comet Ping Pong, James Elefantis, some other things that have just really kind of still make news. I mean, whether they call that fake news, that's another story, but there's more information, so we're going to continue with that summary shortly after this.
Thank you for joining us here for the Court of Public Opinion. I've been talking about this case for a number of weeks. And if you really follow the case to the depths that some people are, you could probably find yourself in a few different places. So what am I talking about? The case regarding the little girl. And, um, you know, ever since this whole thing started, I, I wondered how far do you get into the details before you lose yourself in that. It's Christmas, so I want to wish everybody a Merry Christmas, by the way. You know, my heart aches because I, I almost sense that if you try to weave the story together, you end up other different directions. I don't want to do that. I, I The whole point to doing a post on the Court of Public Opinion is at least start with something we got. At least start there, you know what I mean? Because everybody has to have a starting point and, you know, set aside this topic because I want to take a moment to, you know, um, just got the news that George Michael had passed away. He's uh, obviously a very, very popular musician, singer, and part of the group of Wham. Like we grew up on with his music. I'm just thinking about how life just slips by and before you know it, something like that happens and I'm thinking about maybe that older woman who's passing away she just slips back in so, so you know people slip away how precious life really is and if you're holding someone's hand and I'm thinking have you all held a baby in your hands you know see me I'm, I'm very cautious because I realize I, I'm holding a little child and they're fragile they're not like me which even I become more fragile as I get older. But when I'm holding on a little kid, I, 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 I'm not thinking about things like this, this image. You know, I mean, I think sometimes we overlook that I, I, when people think in terms of playing, I'm not thinking like that. So I don't even, I don't even go there. I'm thinking about these little baby arms and I'm looking at her little hands and, and I'm looking at that face like, you know, any little kid is going to want the attention and affection of an adult. That's what children do. They want to obey, you know. Children are obedient, whether it's good or bad. They want to obey. They're just little kids. <laughs> little kids, they, they, and the last thing they need to do is feel afraid of the adult taking full advantage of them. To me, this is, this took it, they took it too far here. Look at that tape job. Can you really, really look at that and, and be okay with this? So that, 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 that crosses the lines in so many ways. We were talking about this earlier in the post. False imprisonment. You know, at least, if you're a, anybody that's ever gone to jail, at least you get Mirandarized. But if you're going to be falsely imprisoned, this is the way to go, right? Because you can't, you can't do this. This is a little girl. She, she has to be three or four years old. Maybe not, yeah, three or four years old. You know what three-year-old and four-year-olds, you know how little their arms are? You don't have to tape them down like that. And look at how much tape he used. I, this, the, I, I have to ask a question. There are people going to bed tonight in the D.C. metro area. Are you comfortable paying police to do the job. I mean, I, I, I also heard a story that police are making up stories just to mislead the media. I mean, you want to talk about going too far? You know, at the end of the day, if the law, this is why you got to get to court. This is why you got to get a decent attorney. And this is why decent attorneys who, who understand the law, there are plenty of judge advocates. There are plenty of advocates out there that know that this is not okay. And I don't know what, what when the taxpayers start asking real questions. Instead of getting to the point of being upset and shocked, you have to do something. You have to call your congressman. Because if, if something like this, and as they can, they can minimize it, they can, they can say what, we're making a big deal out of this. Yeah, this is a big deal. Because we pay tax, there's taxpayer money that goes into investigating stuff like that. And every taxpayer, as long as you have to pay taxes and you're obligated to, to doing that, which you know if you didn't pay your taxes, you'd be in jail eventually. They don't give us a pass. And this, 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 
This is this doesn't fly because who James Elefante is? I, I didn't know who he was. I still don't know who he is. All I know is that he's been to the White House several times. His boyfriend is Media Matters or something. I I I see. I don't know who these people are. Do I care? Not really. Because I don't, first of all, I don't live in the D.C. metro area, but I, I, I mean, if that were happening here in the Pittsburgh region, which it did, okay, when the story about Jerry Sandusky came out, he was such a familiar face. I mean, we grew up on watching Penn State Pitt play, okay? That's really creepy, okay? And if you really follow the case about Jerry Sandusky, how many people knew about it and didn't do anything? Now it's already out in the media. And you're hearing stories now that police are making up stories. See, I, I have to ask why. Because, see, this is why facts matter. Okay, I can't get into every little detail of every little thing. We could be here forever. I have to go based on what is right here in front of us for the safety of this little girl. Because I, I'm going to ask the same questions that anyone else, if I was right there in Washington, D.C., asking the same questions. There's an accountability, and the people are, are the ones that are paying the taxpayer funds. So who are these agencies accountable to? The people, the very people that are paying the taxes. That's where the accountability comes from. We hold our officials accountable so that they, do, number one, not only can they do their job and do it right, because we're supposed to be there to support them. But if they're not doing their job correctly, there, there's that end. And it's constructive criticism for that reason alone. I'm not going to go into all this other stuff yet. I just want to pertain to the safety of this little girl. Because first of all, um, there are a couple things that have not yet been fact-checked or um, information that is not available as of yet. One, is this little girl safe? Two, did they do a welfare check? Three, what caseworker was... Um, who's assigned to this case have they um investigated has child line been called has the center for exploited missing children been contacted there's a procedure in that too because this spells a lot of issues for a lot of people okay so these are the things that we're asking okay maybe does it rise to the occasion of calling all these numbers no but there is a process and a reporting process if that is okay so summarizing because I only got two more minutes left here. Where do you start from here? Because so far, where we're at, and this is what has been made available to the public, is that there was a Freedom of Information Act filed, and the detectives had to recant their story and said, and I can't believe this is even true, the detectives and police had to recant their story saying, no, it wasn't investigated. That deserves a lot of internal investigation you heard me correctly, okay? That's problematic. If at best, this is where the public should, this is where you start. Because if the D.C. police said that the, they had to recant their story, that's, that. I, I, this is unheard of, unthinkable. Okay, so if police can make up stories and the public's wrong, okay, that, that that's not the point. The point here is, we need to know if this little girl is number one in safe there's been a safety check done in her behalf number two is there a caseworker any of the caseworkers down there in the dc metro area you go to your you're all assigned children to your case okay whether good or bad you're assigned to children to your case regarding neglect abuse false imprisonment and and, and signs of um safety and welfare issues okay i mean this is just an easy one Okay, I don't have to tell you what you have to do. You know your job better than anyone. Um, so obviously there's a case where case workers assigned, judge advocates. I mean, there's all kinds of people involved in that process. I mean, this is this is uh, Orphans Court 101. Okay, so I mean, there are plenty of children that they do welfare checks on. This particularly is important for this reason. So when we get back to this, and after we summarize that, hopefully we'll get to the bottom of that. In the meantime, please contact your congressman or congresswoman. I'll leave the contact information below. Thank you for listening to the Court of Public Opinion.